What do you think of doing today? Nothing. Nothing? Sitting in the sun? Yeah. Enjoying the weather after three weeks of rain? Or shall we start installing the kitchen? Mm. Okay. Alright. Welcome to a new episode. So when we were back in Holland to get all of our stuff in the shipping containers, we had a lot of room left in the shipping containers and then we bought a second-hand kitchen for just 200 euros. So we have that here and now it's time to get that into the house and see if we can get everything installed, get it in order and see how everything fits. So here is the first container with all of our stuff, the kitchen stuff. This we need to get out of here and into our new kitchen. Do the plumbing, do the water, do the electrics, get these cupboards on feed. A lot to do, but now at least you have an idea at what it's going to be. Now the real work starts. I'm not going to say much about electrics because I'm not an electrician. But I can say that the system here is kind of small. There are not many appliances that I can run at the same time. And that's limited because of the main power that we have here. The main power is only so big that I can run maybe three appliances fully at the same time. So normally when you install a kitchen, you have a lot of groups with their own breaker. But here, it's going to be different because even if I install a lot of breakers, the main issue is the main power supply and I cannot increase that. So since this is a temporary kitchen, I'm going to put all the appliances on one breaker that is already there. Yes, it's not the way to do it. Yes, I can do it differently, but it will not have a different outcome. That being said, enough talking. Let's just give it a go. I made a head store with the water, with sewage and with the electrical system. So now it's time to get the first cupboard in place. So we used to have a bidet next to the toilet. Since we're not going to use it, we removed it. 
And the bidet had sewage, it had hot water, it had cold water. So that's ideal for us to reuse for our kitchen. So you can see it's right next door. So we could just easily extend it from here. into place with these wobbly legs. When we bought this kitchen it had a skirting of 8 centimeters, but I found this a bit low to get all the piping in, so we decided to buy new skirtings of 11 centimeters high. This will give me a little bit more slack to get everything in. However, this also means that the already wobbly legs become more wobbly and it also means that the countertop will be higher. We're getting there. A little bit of adjusting to do. We need to brace it against the wall. Slow but steady. We're getting there. So this is the end of day one of installing the kitchen. We've made a lot of progress. We got all the cabinets here. We even managed to do something with the electrics, the plumbing, and we even got the first two cabinets on its final position. See you in the morning. Welcome to day two of installing the kitchen. As you can see, Sylvia is already painting a bit, touching up the top of the window frame. That was wood, so that uh, the color came through. So we need to apply a little bit more paint over there, a little bit more layers. Um, we've already been busy in the kitchen because we were having a look at it yesterday evening and with a skirting of 11 centimeters the kitchen would be a bit too high for us so we've decided to lower the kitchen down again and not only because of the countertop being too high then but also because it would be a bit problematic with the window frame so with a skirting of 11 centimeters the top of the cupboards would be flush with the windowsill and that would mean that the countertop would be on top of that again. And that would mean that since the windows open to the inside, we could not open the windows, at least not fully. So with lowering everything, we're again able to open the window frames. Now is it all Good, good, good. Well, not exactly because that means that since I have a smaller space beneath the kitchen, I also have smaller space for the electrical wires, for the water, and especially for the sewer. The sewer needs to have an incline to where it goes into the floor. And since that's about two meters into the room, it needs to have an incline of maybe two, three centimeters at least. So now we have for about two, two and a half meters where the sewage needs to go to, we have about two centimeters of incline. It's a bit on the short side, but it is what it is. We're going to try and get it working. Hopefully everything will fit. 
It's going to be a snug fit all right. I've already had to lower the um, electrical sockets a little bit because they were too high for the for the height that we have now. Um, but it looks like everything's going to fit just very tightly, but it will. All right, we're going to continue. We'll put you on a time lapse so you can see how we process. Hopefully everything's going to be okay and we will have a kitchen by the end of the day. So I realize we haven't even shown you our temporary, temporary kitchen. So this is going to be a temporary kitchen inside for the upcoming years, of course, but still temporary. And here we have our temporary, temporary kitchen before the temporary kitchen is installed. Does that make sense? Anyway, if we have the house, we have an extension in front of the house where we get upstairs. And here we made a kind of system with a cooking top and everything. So yeah, that's our temporary kitchen. And a temporary kitchen, of course, also needs a refrigerator and a freezer. And there's no room over there. So those are here. Here we have the freezer. And next to the freezer, we have our refrigerator. So because we lowered the skirting to eight centimeters, there wasn't a lot of room left for the plug of the refrigerator to go into the socket. So I decided to move the fridge to its final position before continuing with the rest of the kitchen. Because you don't want to break down your kitchen again just because you need to put a plug in the socket. Of course. So after I put the fridge in its place, all fitted, and I continued with the bracing of the wall, and after that I could continue with installing the cupboards. The first cupboard is for drawers, then we have a cupboard that's for the oven, after that comes the dishwasher, and then comes the cupboard for the sink. So I've been struggling a bit with getting everything level. Turns out my leveler isn't level. Yeah, then it's going to get a bit difficult. Look. Everything seems perfectly level. Then I change it around. And it's definitely off. That's annoying. Luckily I have another leveler. Slightly off to the right. And when I turn it around, it's still slightly off to the right. So that leveler is good. This one, rubbish. So after this minor inconvenience, I was able to level everything properly and continue with the last cupboard. Alrighty then. I got the electrics, the water almost completely installed. Only last connections to the sink, but for that I need to go to the hardware store. And of course, Portugal be Portugal, the hardware store closes from 12.30 to 2.30 for lunch. 
So I'm going to continue with some other things. One of the features we already didn't like of the countertop of this kitchen is that it's blue, light blue. Not really our color, at least not for a countertop. So we were thinking of wrapping it in an, a different color. However, we see that we have some issues with the countertop. It's swollen, so there's some water that came into the countertop. There's a lot of damages, small damages, bigger damages. So, what I guess I'm trying to say with a lot of words is that we need a new countertop. Don't you think? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that also means that we can't really continue, or at least maybe, you know what? Maybe I'll just install it temporarily. So at least we can cook inside because that would be awesome. And use the dishwasher and the sink and everything. No more washing up. No more washing dishes. That would be great. Yeah, so I'll probably install it temporarily and then we'll get it out of here and install something new when it arrives. So where the kitchen used to be installed, the countertop was in between two walls and on both sides of the cupboards there was a little bit of space left filled in with a board uh, to, to make a nice finishing, meaning the countertop itself is a little bit longer than that the cupboards are. Now we are installing it in between cupboards instead of in between walls. So we need to cut a little bit off, which gives me a good excuse to use a new toy. I bought a circular saw with a track. So, let's see if it works. Oh, and by the way, it's powered with batteries. So since we arrived in Portugal, I wanted to buy a um, battery powered system so that you can use the batteries for multiple tools. Um, but I wasn't really sure which system I should use. Uh, in Holland, I was used to using Makita, but it doesn't seem Makita is widely available over here. You do find Makita here, but it's not just not at every hardware store. So I started looking at different hardware stores and different price points because I don't want to spend too much money and I also don't want to be too cheap and buying things twice because it breaks down soon. In the end, I ended up with Einhell. Price is in between the Parkside and the Makita, Bosch, and it has a system with a lot of tools and yeah, it's widely available here. It, basically every hardware store I walk into here in Portugal, it has Einhell. Plus it sponsors one of the F1 teams, so it's a big company I guess. So yeah, I thought in the end, I'll go for Einhell. Let's see if it holds up. Now well, that's a nice and clean cut. Awesome. Looking forward to using this tool more often. Or 
we're making progress. I've connected the water and the sewage. All the piping is in. So let's see if it works. Now let's open the valves here. One. Two. All right. Make sure that these are closed. All right. Now I'm gonna open it here. One, two. Oh dear. Come and look. Why don't you try it? Give it a go. <laughs> we have water. Cold water. That's cold water. And hot water. Well, let's see if it's hot. It's going to be hot. Yes, warm. Yes. It's getting warm. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, ah that's so awesome. Ah. All right, guys, that was it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll probably continue with the kitchen, make it a beautiful place. Now let's see if we can cook some dinner here because the girls are getting hangry. Well, see you in the next one. Ciao! Okay, maybe we're not quite done with this episode yet because we might have a functioning kitchen now. The room is still kind of empty. So let's do something about that. Let's make that a weekend side project. So, what's the plan? Well, over there we have the entrance and we have the door frame that I've installed previously, but we also have a door over here. And this door goes to the living room. So what we want to do now is block this door and not use it and extend the kitchen to the living room. That way it's just more living space really instead of a big hallway to come into the kitchen. And since the living room is quite small we definitely need the extra space. This currently is the living room. Everything happens, everything happens over here. So we eat at the table here. We have our fire here. Yeah. The kids play here. We let the clothes dry here. So coming out of a camper van, this was already quite big, of course, for us. But now that we're here a little while, it's kind of getting a bit small. So let's see what we can do about that. One of the things we have to do is this cupboard. It's right in front of the door to the kitchen. We need to move that. But before we do that, we're going to move the freezer into the kitchen because the freezer now is still located in the extension of the house. Here we have the entrance and there we have the freezer. So let's move that into the house. You gonna help me? Yes, of course. Alrighty then. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ready? Ready. Let's do it. All right, that's step one. Now let's move the cupboard. First thing we'll do is clean out the cupboard, of course, and get a little bit of extra room because it's quite a lot of stuff here at the moment. All right, let's give it a go. Fingers crossed because it's going to be a very, very tight fit. There it is, I recovered. Did I mention that it was a tight fit? <laughs> but sometimes a tight fit doesn't have to be that difficult. It took us maybe five minutes, 10, no, five minutes, 10 minutes, and it's in. Now, let's see what the result is. Boom, boom, boom. We're in the kitchen. From the living room. That's awesome. Well, that was it. See you later.